Hi, welcome back to the journey of a broke pianist. The other day I got a pretty good comment about how learning seems to precede joy in experiencing classical music and thus could it be a great filter uh, for people who would otherwise be interested. Uh, but to that I say, learning is a great joy. Now to illustrate this point, let's imagine a futuristic piece of clothing, perhaps a jacket from the year 2400, that gives you automatic air conditioning, portable air conditioning, and uh, a better posture. So you can refuse that piece of clothing uh, by the fact that it must not feel like any normal piece of clothing that you know of and thus would probably feel uncomfortable or you can give up your notion of what's comfortable and what a piece of clothing should feel like and experience that piece of clothing that jacket for what it is and reap your benefits portable portable air conditioning and uh, better postures and all so the point here is the joy of learning of course, is in that benefit at the end, but it is also in the process where you give up, you shatter indeed, you shatter your preconceived notion, your previous experience of how to go about something and how to experience reality and how to listen to something. Uh, you shatter that and you accept this new, wonderful ways, expansive ways uh, of hearing things and looking at things and thinking about things into your mind. And that is the precisely the joy of learning. And so with that in mind, how do you listen to music uh, that perhaps makes it more conducive to this kind of learning. And notice I said music, not just classical music, any music really. Um, but hopefully good music and instead of the other kind, like um, Luke Ellington said, there's good music and the other kind. Um, so any good music, what, uh, what something basic that you should do uh, to be able to experience it better? Well, not much really. You don't need to try very hard. Actually, the less you try, the more you experience, right? Just be relaxed, be as relaxed as possible and just have bringing no preconceived agenda or notion about anything. Right? Just experience for what it is. But there's one little thing that I find very, very useful that you need to be aware of. And that is the pulse. So think of nothing, but always be aware of the pulse. What's the pulse? Well, it's the beat. So any, this is, uh, once again, the element from French Suite Number no. 2 by Johann Sebastian Bach, a piece that I played in the video two weeks ago. Uh, so the pulse here is one, two, three, four, so, so on and so forth. So always be aware of the pulse. Uh, you don't have to be aware of the one, two, threes or one, two, three, fours. You can just be aware of uh, the fact there is a beat somewhere. Right. So always hold on to that. It will be very, very helpful. And I'm going to go more into detail about listening uh, in future videos. Uh, Again, this is a 
platform for learning and discussion. And by that, I don't mean me teaching you uh, and you are learning. I don't mean that. I mean, we're all learning through discussion here. So feel free to hit the comments um, in critique or in additive uh, information to what I've talked about. So uh, with that in mind, uh, I'm going to play this piece in its entirety one more time. Uh, there are two sections to this piece. Uh, each section has repeats, but I'm not going to play the repeat. I'm just going to play without repeat from beginning to the end. Uh, and I'm going to pick two little details from this piece uh, for further discussion. So, without further ado, But the point here is that 
I think this kind of mistakes uh, is something that one can learn a lot from. And, and that's the very example of the kind of joy of learning that I was talking about earlier. Um, you know, instead of just glossing over this mistake, you know, I thought, wow, like, why wasn't I thinking like Bach there? You know, why would I, why would I do this instead of... And so, yeah, that's, that's, you know, it was a joyful moment when I felt like, wow, I just, you know, I tried on this new piece of clothing and it felt, felt great. I feel like I can move, you know, much more freely uh, than, you know, before I tried on this piece of clothing. So... Uh, that's the first little detail, and I would absolutely love any similar experience uh, that you might have. Um, so please share your experience if you had uh, situations where you know you, you watch a movie or uh, you know art appreciate a piece of artwork or uh, a literary work, you know novel, poetry, whatever, and and you. Before you, like for example, you were about to turn the page and you thought, okay, this must be what's happening on the next page. And you flip the page and it wasn't at all. And the author's choice was so much better than yours. And, you know, I would love if you have any experience like that. Please share in the comments. So, the second little detail is uh, this little, I would call alliteration here, like musical alliteration. So, so notice this ascending scale. So now, here's where the counting comes in, right? So, you see, the, this figuration is placed at different parts of the beat. So you have on the beat and off the beat. So you have so it's it's kind of like an alliteration here, uh, where you have syllables placed at different places uh, of you know a verse, for example. Uh, but here is where I would really ask you, you guys help uh, because and, and sort of not just ask you guys help but also sort of an, an exhortation for uh, both you and me uh, to go out there and, and read more and the, the question is have you yourself a favorite example of alliteration, right? Do you have a favorite instance of alliteration in poetry? And if you do, please share. And if you don't, I exhort you and myself to go out there and read more poetry. Uh, and it's, it's fascinating because when I played this excerpt, a few verses in Chinese uh, popped up in my mind, but you know it's very unlikely that uh, many of my viewers would uh, uh, understand Chinese. But I'm still gonna throw these verses out there. Uh, there's instances in of alliteration. Actually, I'm just gonna throw two verses out there uh, where there are instances of alliteration that are similar to this. So, and that is. 春江潮水连海平，海上明月共潮生。You see, I'm gonna point to different corners of the uh, screen to show points where the syllables are repeated. So, 春江潮水连海平，海上明月共潮生。You hear the syllables that are repeated? And of course, at different, with different placement 
in the verse. So it's a bit of a long video today, uh, but I would really, really love to expand on these two little details and perhaps, you know, let's find examples of alliteration or examples where you have found out just, you know, marveled at the artistry of the creator um, when compared to what you think that the creator was going to do in a certain place. So, um, so long for today. Thank you for watching and see you next week.